Welcome to the New School of Marketing podcast, the place for smart, simple strategies that will amplify your business results. Sharing practical tips, insider knowledge and actionable advice because marketing is something that every business owner can do. Now, let's get started. Introducing your host, Bianca McKenzie, mum, lover of snow sports, camping, horse riding and in-demand launch strategist and Facebook advertising knowledge bank. Welcome back to the New School of Marketing podcast. Before we dive in, I would love to pay respect and acknowledgement to the Palawa people of Lutarita, who are the traditional owners of the land on which my business operates, and I pay my respect to their elders past, present, and emerging. Okay, so I'm really, really excited about this episode, which in a way is a little bit odd because it's not necessarily something new or something I haven't spoken about before. In fact, I am talking about it again because it came up in a recent mentoring session, actually quite a few mentoring sessions. And I think some people skip this part or maybe they aren't aware of it or maybe they're not really aware of the value of it. All right, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the essential parts that you need to have a grip on or at least in place before you launch an online course or membership. Sure, you can try to launch without some of these components, but I would say that things will be a lot harder. When you're moving from one-on-one work to launching a course and you want your course to be part of your income stream, you need to know how many sales you need to make each month to get to your particular income goal. Selling online courses versus one-on-one services means that you're switching to a different audience. So if you've been selling services, that's probably what your marketing has been focused on. And the audience that you've attracted have been people who want to outsource and not DIY. And when you add courses to the mix, you're in a way starting from scratch because your audience is very different. Plus you need a much larger audience to be able to reach the number of sales. In a nutshell, selling one-on-one services tends to have a higher price tag, but also a higher conversion rate. That means that you need less leads to be able to still make a certain amount of sales and income. When you start selling courses, you need more leads because the conversion rate is often a lot lower. I know people talk about passive income. I would call it leveraged income. There are statistics available for the average conversion rate of an online course, and they tend to hover between 1% to 3%. This means that 1% to 3% of your audience, the right audience, obviously, (laughs) will convert to a sale, but only if your funnel is set up correctly. There's obviously a lot more that comes into play with this, but in general, it is not necessarily easier to sell online courses and I need you to be completely aware of this. And I know that I'm starting to talk to talk some jargon here, like, you know, words that you might not necessarily understand or even terms. Look, you probably just want to create a course and help as many people as you can. But <laughs> I need you to be aware of this. So I'm going to break it down into five elements that you need to have in place before your online course goes out into the world. Or at least be aware of this when you start thinking about launching an online course. All right, let's dive in (laughs) so I can tell you what I'm talking about. Number one, have a way to attract a mass of leads. Selling online courses is a numbers game. It is entirely different from selling one-on-one services. And as I just mentioned, the average conversion rate for online courses is 1% to 3%. So if you keep this number in mind, you should be able to reverse engineer the number of sales you need to make to reach your income goals. You should also be able to reverse engineer the number of leads you need to be able to reach your sales goals. Because it is a numbers game, you'll need a large number of leads. And for this, you need a way to attract a mass of leads. Your social media strategy will play a large part in this, but will you get enough leads from it? That's a question you need to ask. You might need to think about a way to speed up your lead generation process through a variety of marketing channels, and you might already be doing this. 
Um, you could have an aggressive podcast guest strategy where you commit to applying to be a guest speaker on a number of podcasts. You could commit to running a challenge before your cart opens, or you can invest in Facebook and Instagram advertising to speed up your lead, lead generation process. You could do all of these things, or you could do some of these things. It could all be part of your launch and marketing strategy, but you need to kind of think about this. Either way, you need a way to attract a mass of leads if you want your course to be a decent income stream for your business. Number two is have a way to nurture your leads. So the next essential step is to have a way to nurture your leads because let's be honest, nobody is going to buy something they have only just heard about, at least not many people. Most people need to get to know you better. They need to get to know that you can solve their problem or fill their desires. They need to know that they can trust you. They need to know that you're the right person for them to buy from. So how are you going to take these new leads on a journey from just finding out about you to trusting you to be the person to work with? How are you going to build a relationship with them and nurture that relationship to go from acquaintance to buyer? And there are many ways to do this, and some of them could be done at the same time. For example, you can have an email nurture sequence in place, which is a series of emails you deliver over a number of days or weeks that takes your lead deeper into your world and tells them about you um, or teaches them and or teaches them something further to show that you know what you're talking about. Another way is to deliver a series of videos or host a webinar where you teach something so that they get to both see what you do and that you know your topic Plus, they get to meet you in a way so they know who's behind the business. You can also use a nurture strategy as part of your social marketing, like social media marketing. Although it can be up and down in terms of deliverability and not everyone might see what you're posting because of the algorithm. Um, But you could use Facebook advertising to deliver some of your nurture content to really further that relationship that you've just started. Either way, you need to build and nurture relationships if you want to sell courses. Number three is have a way to convert your leads. The next essential step is to have a way to convert your leads into buyers. It is great to bring leads into your world, but then you need to be able to convert them into buyers. So how are you going to take them from lead to buyer? What kind of systems do you need for this? What kind of copywriting do you need to explain your offer and entice them to purchase? What kind of questions do you need to answer before they take the next step? Are you selling exclusively through an online sales page or are you getting people to apply for a personal call first? These are all questions that you need to think about. You need a way to convert your leads to buyers and it needs to be a way that resonates with your audience and it makes it easy for them to say yes and take the next step. And the reason I'm adding this is that I've seen sales pages that didn't have a clear call to action or a clear checkout process. It's almost as if the person selling the program didn't want the sales because they made me work hard to find out how to actually buy from them. So make it obvious. Don't expect people to find a way to buy from you. Like, don't make me dig for it. If it's too hard, they'll go somewhere else. So put yourself in your buyer's shoes and think about what you would like to see if you were them. What's all the information that they need up front? And that's not necessarily all of the this is included and that kind of thing. They need to know what's at the other end. Really paint that picture. Put yourself in the buyer's shoes. Maybe you've had a good experience buying from someone else and think about what made it a good experience. What did you like about it and how can you apply this to your business? So have a way to convert your leads. Then number four, tweak and optimize your funnel until it has a proven consistent conversion rate. So the next step is your funnel and your conversion rate. And I'm saying funnel because that's essentially what it is. Picture the kitchen gadget, like the thing that's called a funnel. (laughs) It's wide at the top. You pour liquid into it. I don't know, something else. And It squeezes through a smaller section at the bottom so that you're not spilling it when you pour it into a glass jar or or a jar or a bottle, whatever you're pouring it into. (laughs) A sales funnel works in a similar way. 
The top of the funnel, the wide part, is where your leads go in. And you need a lot of leads because only 1% to 3% come out the bottom as buyers. I'm still going by this average number. Yes, there are people that do different numbers, but this is the consistent average. Like it's called an average for a reason. So, yeah, that there's less coming out the bottom than there is at the top. Um, your funnel is a series of steps that, l- that your lead goes through before they decide that they actually want to pop out the bottom and become a buyer. So picture your funnel as a journey. What steps does a lead take to become a buyer? And most of the time, a big part of the funnel is focused on nurturing, which we already discussed can happen from like using videos, webinars, email marketing, social media. Like there's so many options. You need to think about that. So you need to create a funnel that makes sense to your audience and delivers them with all of the information they need to become a buyer. It needs to both paint a picture of what awaits them on the other side, aka it solves a problem or it delivers a desired result, and it also needs to address all of the objections that someone may have that stops them from committing to buy. Like it's not easy. Running a sales page is not easy, like a good sales page. (laughs) Um, When you design your funnel, you need to consider each stage that your lead will go through. And most of these stages are awareness, interest, consideration, and decision. And each stage requires a different approach of marketing and and communication. So think about all of this. Once you've created your funnel and implemented it, you need to start sending traffic through it and you need to measure each step of the way. So analyze where people get stuck, where the bottlenecks are, what you can optimize and change it so that it flows better. Keep tweaking and making changes until you get your desired results. I feel like a lot of people, when they do this, they stop too early. This is a process. It takes quite a few goes. Like creating a funnel, if you can create like the ultimate funnel straight out the gate, that's like a miracle. It's like a unicorn, honestly. This takes work. Like, constantly test it, tweak it, test it, tweak it. This is why you need to know your numbers. How many people are email opening, opening your emails? How many people from becoming a lead are coming out the other end? They buy from you. So like it's just this constant process. Once your funnel is converting at a rate that's average or better than average on a consistent basis, Only then can you consider scaling your lead generation efforts and drive more traffic to your offer. This is a process and there's no point in scaling it until you have a conversion rate that's consistent and that you're happy with. Then you can start scaling. So selling courses is all about having enough traffic to get the desired amount of leads into your funnel to then get the desired amount of sales out of your funnel. It's all about numbers and it's all about tracking each step of the funnel. All right, number five, have a way to deliver your course. I know, like seriously, this is so important. This is like one of the most important steps. It's one that can't happen without all the others, but it is something you really need to put a lot of thought and effort into. This step is all about delivering your course and to do it so well that people rave about the outcome and the process. You want to create a group of people who are so absolutely ecstatic about your course that they can start talking about it and they become your unofficial sales team. Like it's those kind of people. So putting your all into the delivery of your course will pay off for years to come. They will be a bigger like your, your current students will be a bigger sales driver than anything else. It will help you build a reputation for what you offer. People start talking about it. And make sure that you get feedback from your students and to make improvements along the way and also encourage your students to give you any feedback, like the good, the bad, the ugly, because only then can you make improvements. Also encourage testimonials because they will help future students in their decision-making process Um, testimonials really instill trust and trust will convert to purchases okay so that's it 
the essential steps you need to consider before you create and launch an online course. I will do a really quick recap. So the first one is have a way to attract a mass of leads. Two, have a way to nurture your leads. Three, have a way to convert your leads. Number four is tweak and optimize your funnel until it has a proven, consistent conversion rate. Number five is have a way to deliver your course. All right. Creating and selling courses can be incredibly rewarding, both financially and creatively. Like you can help more people this way. Courses are great for people who are either at the beginning stages or those who don't quite have the budget to outsource their work um, or work with one-on-one, one-on-one with someone, but they are not an easy way to quickly make money, which is what some people seem to think about courses. Like it's everywhere. Create a course and like make more money. And it is not that easy. <laughs> it, it really, it takes time to develop a good course and it takes even more time and effort to sell it. Don't let this stop you though. Like honestly, don't let it stop you. Just be mindful of it. It's not as easy as what everyone makes it out to be. If you want to start building an audience and be seen as the expert in your field, but you're not quite ready for actual leads because maybe your funnel isn't ready or your course isn't quite ready yet, I have the perfect strategy for you all wrapped up neatly into a course. Yep. (laughs) You can start being visible and position yourself as the authority with the client attraction code. It's a Facebook advertising strategy that helps you be seen for as little as $2 a day. It's seriously awesome. And the course is only $37 and this strategy will pay off when you're actually ready to start advertising for leads. It's like the warm up, the build up, right? (laughs) It helps you get your social media content, your organic social media content be seen by more people. It's a really good strategy. If you're only going to invest in one type of Facebook ad strategy, I would say this is it, especially that lead up process. I'll include all of the details in the show notes. All right, that is it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope it was helpful. I can't wait to share more marketing tips with you next week. If you are ready to take your business to the next level with Facebook and Instagram advertising, make sure that you visit newschoolofmarketing.com to download practical free resources, plus subscribe to the podcast and never miss an episode. I can't wait to go on this journey with you. Until next time, take care and market your business every day. 